Hey, it's Joe and Isaiah from The Automator. And do you ever want to have specific options available in like an edit field, but still allow for a change just in case you need to mix it up? Well, in this video, Isaiah is going to walk us through how to easily use a combo box in a GUI to make it simpler. And if you stick around, you're going to see some voodoo magic he does with the format command that can really make it easy to wrap text or to take anything and do stuff with it. So let's let's jump into here, Isaiah. Go on. Yep. So basically what we're going to be doing, let me share my screen real quick. We're going to be taking a uh, program that we uh, that I developed a little while ago for you. Right. Uh, so let me just now go ahead and run it. WinP. There we go. So this is the the tool that we are referring to, and it was something that we decided uh, it was us uh, used for searching your your pretty links and stuff like that. Now we want to add some options. So one of them is to have, allow us to decide what we're gonna pre append at the end of the link, right? Why do you show right now, why do you double click one and paste it somewhere so that they can right. see what oh, it's doing, right? Video. So, so yeah, so, so basically right now, if I double click, it automatically grabs the, whatever I double clicked and it is appending something in the end here, but it is not being, uh, it's not kind of like an option right now. Right. And you were telling me that you want all of this section here to be kind of like by itself. And we decide when to append at the beginning and at the end of it. Append or append. Yeah. Right. So this section here, well, not, not that. The HTTPS and the link here should be optional. That's what you're saying, right? Right. So we decided for well, just yeah. the HTTPS colon slash slash. I still want the dash automator dot com slash. That'll always be there. Right. So this per, this part here is always going to be there. Right. The only thing that is optional is the right. the HTTPS and this part here. But this little section right here might change as well. So we just added a little bit of complexity to what we're doing. Now, notice that what I'm what I'm doing is that y it is a while loop, so you can actually select multiple of them, and you can paste uh, various links, right? But uh, we want to make sure that all of what we just mentioned is optional. So now, this little guy right here, now we're going to convert it into a template, and that's where the format function is going to come into place. You will notice how easy it would be to add a few or remove stuff from it. So now, <clears throat> the first thing that I'm going to do is update the GUI. So I have my GUI up here. And in my GUI, uh, I have a few functions down here. And we are looking at the list view manager here. This list view manager is the one that uh, allows me that when I double click, then I, I call this uh, function, right? And I get whatever you double click, whatever you double clicked. Now, this is actually a different thing. That's when you control C. So the double click and the control C are working separately. And that's bad code, but it's okay. I could just made it the, the control C to call the same function. It's okay. Now, what we're going to do is this. Let's go ahead and first add the GUI elements that allow us to do the selection. So the first thing that we're going to do is adding a combo box. And this is the one that is going to be kind of like a little drop down. Uh, again, I'm just I'm just going to put it to the right side of whatever I had before. And now what we're going to do is have a few default options. So the default options would be um, NWS, which is the newsletter, right? Um, and TAC, for example, those are two options. Now, when I go ahead and run this, let's go ahead and verify what happens. So if I run the program, now I have a little combo box and I have some options here that I could just simply select and that's it. And I would have one of them pre-selected. I think that the only thing to do that is just to put two pipes instead of one. If I remember correctly, and now when I when I run this, now oh, hold on, didn't you start the? It should have started. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Now now it has one pre-selected, which is something that I want. Now the other part is uh, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller for now, 
because usually those things are three, four letters. Yeah. And I'm going to have kind of like a check mark that would allow me to wrap things around or disabled. not. Right, exactly. So these, yeah. I'm going to make Can the... Can show real quickly, though, just because people may not be aware of this, on a combo box, the amazing crazy amazing thing is you can type in there too right yeah like, that's right and let me let me try something out real quick one two three this is something that people do not know you can do either so elephant or something now let's go ahead and run the script not only you can select like this right you can actually type in there but here's the interesting part if you type E-L, and you hit the up or down arrows, it actually goes to the first one that matches that. So you could actually save a little bit of time. You can jump to the one that you want. So if you are typing O-N and hit down, it will go to one. So you don't have to type the whole thing either. You just type part of it, and it goes ahead and jumps to the next one that matches whatever you're yeah. actually doing. If we were building a tool for a client that we wanted it to be a little more flexible, because of course I don't mind coming in here and adding adding a new value into this array of you know things that are piped right. limited, but you we, we could easily could... save this like to an any file, right? Um, that's right, and have it remember like oh right. when I type something new and hit enter, I want it to get added to that list of to that list of the defaults. Yes, that's right. But basically, combo boxes are I I, I would definitely mostly use combo boxes whenever I can. They're amazing. Um, unless I do not want to have the flexibility of well, typing, right. which is very weird. I don't well, know no, sometimes, trust me, you know, okay. someone who worked in survey research, it, when you let people type stuff, they, they type crappy stuff, right? <laughs> so when you want to lock it down and yeah, say it's going to be one of these, you know, it is a great way to do it. Yeah, that's, that's right. Because now if I type whatever I want here... Right. And when I try to use my tool, it might break just because of what you typed. And I don't want to be checking well, what you type every single yeah. time. Let's, so, let's say we're doing yeah. something for email metrics. Right. And there are certain businesses that we're adding to the end of this to know which one it is or regions or whatever. Right. I, I you, don't want, you don't want anybody to write whatever you want. Right. Right? So, thing. right. But in it's any case, on most of on this one, it doesn't matter because you right. might decide to write whatever you want. Right. And that's okay. So cool, no problem. Now we're gonna go but, ahead and add. But also, by the way, this came up because you and I were chatting, and right. I didn't want it to be freehand written every time for right. that exact purpose. I wanted right. that assist list because I'm like, exactly. I might think NWS and then think in EWS, you know, because right. it's newsletter, and I don't want to have all this, you know, bad data. Right. So basically, what what a combo box does, it allows you the flexibility of typing but it also gives you kind of like a like a autocomplete list that you can use to use one that is uh, and, and what's real this is one of those things that you got to take a step back and look at auto hotkey and go imagine doing this in another language where this is <laughs> readily available right the programming right. that it would take to build this you know it's like this saves you so much time it's so easy it and does. if you're new to GUIs this the the link below me here is our GUIs are easy course which um we cover all you know the basics of working with GUIs yep so let's call this little checkbox whatever let's go to call it wrap for now later on we might figure out another name that is more fitting but for now I just want to verify if I'm uh getting what I need yes I am but keep in mind that checkboxes are annoying because they are a little bit smaller than other controls. And when you do that, the next control that you use is going to be a little bit higher than previously because the checkbox is a little bit higher. So I usually add three to the three pixels. So Y previous plus three to kind of like center it a little bit. And now, well, I need a few more Y plus. Let's make it 15 here. And that should allow me to have it, yeah, more or less how it was before. This box is already kind of like uh, centered. And that's it. So basically, I already have what I want. And the wrapping would be disabled by default. You just want that wrapping sometimes, right? So I'm going to leave it disabled by default. Um, and that's it. So now we already have the GUI elements that we need. I need variables for those two for later on checking the information. So this is going to be my prepend 
and this is gonna well my prefix suffix right and this is gonna be wrap you didn't want to write post pend <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so weird yeah no. some people some people use it anyways but i'm like yeah no that, that that doesn't go so now that we know that we could go ahead and grab some information depending on these guys so here we go we're gonna have these two guys and we could use the um, the gui control get instead of global for now i'm just gonna do it for quick purposes now in this case what i want to do now is the following i want to have a template so template is going to be this template um it's going to be our theautomator.com here right so this is something that i always want right the other thing that i always want is the slug that always goes there but now we're going to have a one at the beginning, which is going to be what I'm going to prepend, and a two in here. That is my other thing that I'm going to append. So those are two things that I could decide to add or not add. So and I just want to point out here because it, it's something that's not intuitive, right? Right. It is the things you just put in there were inside your quotes, right? Right. Yes, They're they are. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not a variable then. It's inside quotes. No, this is... This is not... This is it's true. It's not a variable. No. It's a template that right. when I use the format uh, function, what is going to happen is I'm going to pass my template and the first... So this variable right here is going to be... This, whatever I put in the first parameter is going to be put there. And whatever I put on the next parameter is going to be put there. And if I have more of those, I would have, for example, number three here. So as you can tell, I could actually place it wherever I want inside my text. And I just have to pass it as a parameter to this function, which is really good, especially when you're trying to insert stuff in the middle of strings. You see what I mean? Yeah. So right now, the first parameter what I'm going to put here is if wrap check here, if wrap check, I want to insert HTTPS, right? And, and if not, it's going to be blank. Now, the, the second parameter is also checking for wrap check right here. So is wrap check? Yes. Then I'm going to insert the question mark, the source, right? And the equal sign and uh, the value for the suffix, whatever is at that moment, right? I do need to, I think I have to do a GUI submit. No hide. I think I have to do that because if not, it's not gonna, it's not going to get the values. That's the reason why I don't like to use those guys, but it's okay. So let me see if we understood exactly what is going on. My URL is always going to be the same. Now, in the first parameter, and let me just finish off my ternary here just to make sure that it's good. So my first part is going to check my checkbox. If it is checked, I'm going to add something. And that is going to be automatically added to the first part in here. I don't even have to think about putting it somewhere. Um, if we went to do this with an if statement here, it would look really messy. It would look like, like you know, all of this. Oh, yeah. I would have, I would have right. done them in steps kind of thing. Right. right. So it, it would look really messy. So I would have to have this in here. And later on, and, and actually, this is a very simple stream. But just imagine doing this in an HTML. So you have a whole page and you want to insert something in the middle of the page. Then just create a, a template of the HTML and just put the one or the two, wherever you want. And your format function would just put that in there, you know? So it is a little bit easier to work with when you have a template and just tell it where you want to put the stuff, right? Well, Ian, and to your point is, is 
if you were reusing the the content in that under the two or the one whatever you can use it multiple places yes yeah so i could put the one here again like i could put the one in here again right. and then the two and you will right. see what that you yeah. will see what that does i will i will do kind of like a little thing but let's let's run it and see what happens so the first thing is if just without the wrapping i should just get the url without anything so now if I go ahead and paste, I should, oh, look at that. So my slug is empty because, and this is the thing, I first need to get the slug before creating the template. Ah, yeah. Right, so I was, I was getting the text yeah. after I created the template, so the template was empty. So let's do that again. Yeah, this is why you test. <laughs> exactly. So let's do that again. Now I, I say WP, I get my double click, it's done. Now I have my slug. Everything is good and there is nothing wrapped around it. Right. Now, if I go ahead and open up this again and now I wrap stuff around it, if I double click, now I should get the HTTPS and I should get my newsletter at the end. Notice that I just changed two lines of code, right? And it was very simple for me to do that. And now let's go ahead and change the, the, this here. I still wrapping stuff around. Now it should use whatever I selected. And not only that, if I do anything freehand, yeah, yeah. my tag or whatever, it should also work out just fine. You see? So everything, and, and, and the good thing about this is that now I don't have to be worried about if these things are gonna be done correctly. Because as it is a template, I know exactly what to do. Now, for example, let's say for that now the HTTPS, I don't want it there. I want it here. For It doesn't make any sense. Or I want it two times. It doesn't make any sense, but notice how this would work. Yeah, if you were doing a, a, an email distribution, you know, and you might mention the person's name several times. Several right? times, it would be very easy for you. Uh, let me just one second. Did I, uh, I need to wrap this out around and... Now the HTTPS is going to be in two places. Look, so, so, and I didn't do any, I just put a one. Um, but I can move this around. I can, uh, it is very easy for me to change the template. And as soon as I change it, then it would be good. So if you have more parameters, if you have more things, you just add more and more parameters and they're numbered. So number one, number two, number three. Um, you just put the number here of the parameter that you're working with, right? The cool thing about the format function is that not only you can do that, but you can also manipulate the text. Um, like for example, number two, I want it to be title case or something like that. Those kind of things. I have a video yeah. where I do right. really a lot of it because it's, it's so crazy powerful. It is, it is really powerful. You can just move the things around, but not only that, you can convert well, everything to lowercase, title case. Yeah. Well, you know. actually back to your point, Isaiah, which is a really good one because it could come up that I want to reuse two multiple times, but sometimes I want it title cased or lowercase, whatever, right? And that allows right. you that flexibility of still having oh, a very- Yeah, the, uh, number two here, is going to be normal, but the next time I use it, it's going to be title case, right, right. right? So I could definitely decide whether the first time I use it is normal yeah. and the next one is lowercase or whatever it wants. So I, I do suggest you take a little time, understand the, the, format, um, um, the format function, but just think about it this way. It's just a template that you can put the, the parameter numbers in different locations and you can move it around however you want. When you use the format function, whatever you pass as the first parameter is going to be plugged into that number in the template. That's what is going to happen. So yeah. in general, just um, play a little bit. I hope that this example showed you how easy it is to update a GUI to, to do very complex stuff right. Uh, right. like this very quickly. Can you bring it up real quick? Yes. The GUI itself? Yes. So the other thing I should, because we didn't really discuss what, what the whole tool does, right? Because it's not relevant. Right. But I, I was thinking about it. I was kind of funny because we wrote this tool because I didn't want to have to worry about going and getting the, you know, doing a typo. So we can come in here, type a quick search. It's going to list. It, it dynamically goes and pulls all of the pretty links from our website. Um, yep, and lets it me does. filter on them and then say, this is the one I want. 
And that way I don't have to worry about what I put into like my newsletter or in a lot of these videos like I did with the format command underneath me right now. Um, I didn't just, you know, I can look it up so simply and not have right. to hope that like I typed it right. Right, exactly. That's right. <laughs> so in general, this is this was a very interesting tool. And if, if the original tool was flexible enough, it would have been great, but it, it is missing a lot of things. In our case, we are having a search. Soon, what I'm going to do is not allow you only to search here on the on this section. Right. I would also search on the URLs themselves so that you can right. search on both sections at the same time, yep. which is not that yep. difficult. But and, as you can tell... A fuzzy search instead right. of uh, in-string kind of exact. Right, match. right. So basically, it's going to be a little bit more flexible than the original tool. That's all it is. But this is one of those things like you don't, you know, even the things we've done already, it's so simple and it's it's amazing what you can do with a GUI to really streamline. And it, it's one of the things why I can crank out the newsletter so quickly is I don't spend 8 million hours trying to look up all of my stuff before because I'm a big fan of QAP, right? I was storing them in QAP, but it takes a lot, you know, a bit of time to go look it up, bring it into QAP, add you it, have, and then you have it. way too many. It's yeah. just the, the, the sheer amount of them that you have, right? So right. if you was just five of them yeah you just add them in qp but in the end you needed something to kind of like fetch it for you because right. that's what we're so doing we could do this exact same thing with like the pages or posts also right and then yeah. i'm like hey I, if i don't have a pretty link for it i can still pull it up and type real quickly oh there's my page i don't have to go find it this is yep. why when we do videos and stuff i'm often updating that edit screen of showing the stuff and, and i'm doing it really fast right like in right. people Oh my God, you have such a great memory. No, no, I, <laughs> I remember and I did it, but I don't have to remember the actual URL, right? Exactly, like, exactly. There you go. So, awesome. Thanks, awesome. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Okay, so we thought we were done, and uh, we were like, let's work on our next project. And uh, it was, the next project was I wanted to add something to a GUI we do with FFmpeg. Uh, why don't you go ahead and share your screen? And, and what we realized was, Hey, in, hey in this is related. Things. Yeah, right. It was like, oh my God, it was so easy to do when we were looking at our GUI. Right, right. So let me go ahead and run the script real quick. Right. First. And what we have here, just one second. Yeah, we have this uh, tool that presses files through FFmpeg, and we're going to add a, one option here. Right. And then we were looking at this, and you said like, hey, that should also be a combo box, right? Right, yeah, it was and so I, good to have had it. Yeah. Right, and, and then I told you, oh, that's a very simple fix. And, and that's, after, that's overstating it even. Right, and, 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 yeah. and when you said that, like, like when I, I did it, I, yeah. Like, like, yeah. everybody knows it's a simple fix, but the problem is once you see how easy it is, you're right. going to be like... It's, it's, it's embarrassing not to do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, the only thing that I had to do is just come back here uh, look for the edit box that we're talking about here. The only thing you have to do is switch it to combo box. That's it. You just fi you, you just finished. Now, I just want to make sure that this p uh, this option here is the default. So I just added two pipes there just so that it shows up automatically. And now when I run the script again, so if I run it again, now this is a combo box. That's it. It's just that simple. It's not that. It's not. So if you really found this very, if you have edit boxes, right? That usually you're gonna be using the same values over and over again. It right. makes more sense to have a combo box, yeah. right? And so. again, we talked about if you wanted to actually save, which a lot of people would. Oh, I want to have this saved in the list, and I want it updated in case I add to it. I don't want to go in and edit the GUI. Yeah, you could easily do that. But yeah. again, for for stuff that we're working on. It's not worth it, you know. We can just go in and edit. Yeah, you know. but basically, you can see how it is, it, how easy it is to just update your projects if you decide to use combo boxes instead of edit. Uh, uh, and just think about it: instead of you have a list, which is a drop-down list, and an edit box, so you have both at the same time. You know, That's and what earlier is a is it was funny in the this. I was going to say same video, but we're editing it. Um, we talked about why would you restrict people? I'm like, this is exactly why you'd restrict people. Yeah, here, don't I don't want you to put any it. any weird values here. Right. I, I right. don't want you to select different encodings right. than the ones that actually exist. Right. But regarding whatever you're going to append to your file, well, you right. can use a list of pre-selected ones or you can I type can whatever type. you want. Yeah. Right. right. That's it. So I'm giving you the option of typing or choosing one.
Yeah, awesome. That's just crazy how easy that is. All right. <laughs> there you go.